Hey, how's it going? Welcome to the first edition of Rapid Fire Q&A, where I respond to comments and questions asked by my lovely viewers. If you have any questions, post them in the comments of any video. I respond to all my comments on my channel. We've also recently launched a Discord server for Reaper users to ask questions and get troubleshooting help. The link to join the Discord server will be in the description. And the benefit of using that as opposed to sending a comment is that on YouTube, you can't really send us screenshots of your problem areas and we can only respond to you via text. But on Discord, you can upload screenshots we can hop on a quick video chat with you so come join us unless you're an annoying person in which case just keep being insufferable on facebook groups and stuff like that we don't want anybody <laughs> currently on the discord server we got mike from let's talk about reaper adam from hi youtube i'm dad the wonderful john tidy of the reaper blog the other adam from hot pole studios and yours truly hopefully we'll get more reaper content creators to get on board very soon i'd love to see andre beller in there and without further ado we got 110 videos to rummage for comments so let's Let's get to some rapid fire question answering. Hey man, do you know how I can quickly change the duration of lots of notes at once? Let's say I use step sequencing notes. How can I convert them to one eighth or other measure so that they move to the corresponding grid? So great question. Let's answer it really quickly. So I have a bunch of quarter notes here and I want to make them eighth notes. Well, the way to do that is select all of them and you hit alt and you come here and your cursor changes into a fist. And now if I just drag them back, now they're eighths. I can also extend them to be half notes or I can use any kind kind of intermediary value. So that's a really quick way of doing that, similar to kind of audio stretching and shrinking and extending. So that's that. I just use a cycle action to cycle between stereo left, right channels. That way I can easily go back to stereo if I want to. Great idea. I'm going to steal this. Thank you, Jeshua. So you can make a cycle action for set take channel mode mono, down mix, left, right, and then have one to normal. Very cool. Really like that idea. Thank you for suggesting it. Have you done a walkthrough of your toolbar setups yet? Yes, I have. So Michelle asked, how you manage to have offline real-time 1x freeze great question let's get into reaper so in your preferences audio rendering you can have this option ticked limit apply effects render stems to real time good for some plugins and this applies to freezing as well for my vsti instruments i have the east west composer cloud that one i found it requires real-time rendering because otherwise sometimes you see the no tails get cut off and other weird things happens when you do it offline for audio i just render offline there's also this cool command called SWS slash NF toggle render speed apply effects render stems. So I think when this is off, it's not limited. And when this is on, that means that it does it real time. So for audio, I don't need to do real time. I can do it offline if I'm freezing audio and I have this on for when I use instruments. Next question. Why not just use contextual toolbars? It's so much cleaner. This is in reference to my top menu. Let's say I went ahead and got rid of 30 of these icons and put them in contextual toolbars. Well, my top toolbar will still take the exact same amount of space. Really, it doesn't do me any favors to get rid of some of them. Once you have a top toolbar, the length is set and you might as well utilize the entire space. And also contextual toolbars are more toolbars. They take up more space in your toolbars. I don't like using contextual toolbars. I have some things that I add to my right click menus. Like if I right click on any item, I got a bunch of things that I added to it. Same thing if I right click on tracks. I don't like using contextual toolbars, so sue me. <laughs> Another person said lots of these buttons could be changed to cycle actions and save space. Yes, they can, but the same answer. Once you have a toolbar, it takes up that amount of screen real estate, regardless of how many items you put them on. So if anything, I'm looking for more commands to add to my MIDI toolbar because it's already taken up some space and it's not, you know, full length. To make Rio Tune work for bass, set the window size higher, about 100 to 200 milliseconds and the overlap higher 2x to 4x. Thank you very much. That's really nice. I use an eight string guitar. So I tried this method, but unfortunately for a, for an eight string guitar, I need to change these like halfway up my strings. So I just prefer to use the GTR tune by waves because it just registers all my strings. But thank you. Great tip. How are your backgrounds slightly transparent? So what they're talking about is that if you look at my menus, you can see that a little bit of color from my tracks below it are poking through here. And this is not a Reaper feature. This is a system preferences feature for Mac. If you go to system preferences, go to accessibility, go to display. And here you got this box that says reduce transparency. So if I tick that box, you can see that my menus are hard colored. And if you untick that box, you can see a little bit of color through them. So that's how you do that. Not a Reaper feature, a Mac feature. And I don't know if there's a PC equivalent for this. Sorry about that. In Ableton, I want to send my bass to my bass. This is not an Ableton channel. That said, I did reply to this guy in comment form because I know Ableton, but you know, uh, 
th this is not Ableton. I was wondering if it's possible to have subcategories within the folders. For example, my folder is named compression and then I add all my compressors, but the problem is there are different types of compressors and EQs and so on. So it'd be amazing to have subcategories that are even different color font that represent these subs. Is this achievable in Reaper? Not to my knowledge, and this would be a really nice feature to have, but as it stands, you can sort by developers, you can create your own folders, but you can't really put folders and subfolders on the FX browser list as far as I know. Have you thought about adding your scripts to Reapack? It would be awesome. I agree, it would be awesome, and I don't know how to do that or who to reach for that. So if you do know the answer, let me know. That said, I don't know if the Repack folks want me to do that. So I don't really script things. I make custom actions that I've gotten from other people's actions. So for example, this action I have bring together and crossfade is from one SWS action plus one script by Archie that I turned into a custom action. So it's not really my script per se. Then what I use is I use the Locasana generate script from custom action to generate Lua scripts from those custom actions. Next question, this is from Scott and he says, I tried to set this up. He's talking about my video import clericals. And he said he couldn't find the script on outboarder and action. And I decided to download my custom action, but the same thing. Uh, those weren't included in the action when I put it into Reaper, any idea? So this is something I didn't know and sorry about that. I export my custom actions using a Locasana script that generates a script from a custom action. So, but apparently if you don't have the actions that exist inside my custom action, you won't be able to run them. So in order to really run those actions, you need all the actions within the custom action. So download those from Reapack and hopefully it'll work. That's it. If you're experiencing any problems with any of my custom actions that you downloaded, please let me know and I'll try to think of a fix. They're out there on the Reaper stash and on my website and I don't want people to download them and for them not to work. This question is about the tab to transient custom action. Does it snap to zero crossing of the transient though? Because if it doesn't, it would kind of suck. Yes, that's something I should have mentioned in my video, but I forgot. So the tab to transient right now works. If you want it to snap to zero crossings, you got to tick this box on top. Use zero crossing, not as precise, but prevents clicks. Which mouse do you use and what other can you suggest? And if someone wants to buy one, what are the characteristics that one has to look before buying one? So great question. My mouse currently is the Logitech G600. This mouse is a regular mouse, but it has 12 buttons on the side. And really it has 24 buttons on the side because it also has three buttons on the top. If I hold this button, which is on the right of my right click, then these 12 buttons on the side will change their assignment. So I can have basically 24 of my commands on these, which I do some things like toggling loop on and off, some editing actions. I have all of those put here. I also can hold this and then I can go to my markers from 11 to 23, which works really well. And then the scroll wheel you can also click on, which is middle click, and you can click right or left. And those are two other commands that you can assign it to. So really useful. However, the problem with this is that I have to change the assignments for these things from its built-in software. So in the built-in software, I have to go and say, you know, G20 is control and F. And then I go and assign control and F to something on my Reaper's actions list. So if there was a way that these buttons would just register as actions in Reaper, that would be good. But unfortunately, that's not possible because these buttons are proprietary Logitech buttons and not really buttons that are recognized globally in Windows and Mac. So what to look for in a mouse? I like a wired mouse. I don't like wireless mice because I have to change the battery. Really think of the ergonomics. Also uh, mice that allow you to change the DPI with a button like this one are really useful. So for some precise measurements, if I'm phase aligning or time stretching or time correcting my tracks, I use a lower DPI so that the sensitivity of my mouse is, you know, lower. And then for overall operations, I use a higher sensitivity mouse. So that's really important. Just something that you think looks good and feels good in your hand is really important because for me, the number one and number two most important tool as your disposal is your mouse and keyboard. Forget about fader ports, forget about fancy MIDI controllers. 90% of what I do, I do with a mouse and keyboard. So I spend as much money as I have to on my mouse and keyboard. I really like the Logitech G600. I like being able to add extra actions that I can access through a click. And I really like being able to change the DPI. So great question. Thank you so much. ADSR Lab, another one of my fellow content creating subscribers. So thank you for the question. Can you make a video about Rewire? Yes, I, I promised to do this um, a while ago, but I totally forgot. So sorry, but Rewire video coming very soon. Thank you so much for your recommendation. Mel Salvarda Production, another fellow content creator that follows my videos. So check out his channel as well. Bo says, I'd love to see a tutorial on metering, specifically spectrum analyzers that can look very different depending on which one you use. I've been spacing on that. So I will definitely do a tutorial on that. Sorry for the delay. So those were some rapid fire questions answered. That's it for today. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.